suckers. Furious Wife is back. And um, tonight we are going to talk about um, how to use five minute multiboxing to multibox in retail. I've been having a lot of fun in retail. Wow. And um, it has been a very pleasant pastime um, after the incredible grind of classic wow i jumped back into classic i leveled five tunes to 60 and it was terrible it was as bad as you could ever imagine um, that old grind being and 22 days later of game time um, I was at 60 and it was very unpleasant. Um, meanwhile, I, I quit that. I, I, I didn't want to just go and run those old raids over and over again, those old dungeons. And I quit that and I started playing retail. Wow. And, and I really warmed up to it quickly. Um, it has a lot of different new challenges, uh, that, that, and in a way, it's much more amenable to multi-boxing, especially five boxing. Really, um, you're going to see here in a few minutes that Retail WoW is, you know, really um, ready for five boxing. And so um, let's jump into it. The first thing you're going to do when you want to... Um, when you want to play retail wow with five minute multiboxing is you're going to join my discord server in the link below and then you're going to go to the download retail five minute multiboxing um, channel and you're just going to download the latest package the one at the bottom all right sometimes i'll leave more than one package up an old version and a new version um, but this time um this time I, I do have two packages up. This time uh, I've put my 10 boxing package up because I do have 10 accounts now. I'm not gonna show you those during this video. I'm gonna keep it simple, but um, yeah, I do have 10 accounts now. So you download this package and what you're gonna do with this package is you are going to um, open it and you're just gonna take the entire thing Hit Control A, and you're going to drag and drop it into your classic. Classic. Why did I click on classic? You, I haven't played classic in a long time. And you're going to drag it and drop it into your retail WoW directory, um, and I'm not going to do it right now. But yeah, it basically looks like dragging and dropping. Come here, man. Don't give me a hard time. So you're going to drag and drop it right into this directory. I'm not going to do it now because um, I'm in the middle of some edits and I don't want to overwrite them right now. Um, and then you're going to open up and create your first tune list. Um, I've got, this is the sample tune list I give you um, with 5-Minute Multiboxing. It has some explanations in it, but um, I'm getting ahead of myself. You're going, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to open the goddamn readme file. Yes, the readme file. That's what you're going to open. And, um, ooh, I gotta, I gotta make sure people aren't chatting because this is a live stream. So I want to make sure I have my, um, chat window open. Say hi to me during the stream. Er, I'm going to put that right there. Say hi to me during the stream if you have anything to say. And let me make sure the stream is actually running. The stream is live. You're three minutes in and I haven't told you anything yet. This stream sucks. Downvote. Um, so let's make this bigger because I really do want you guys to see this. 20, call in 20, yes. Um, we're gonna make this one bigger. Font, 20. All right, we're starting with our readme file. I'm gonna, I'm gonna overwrite that. 
How to run five minute multiboxing. Before starting, remove your GeForce experience. The GeForce experience I have found over the last year or two to interfere with multiboxing, interfere with um, um, multiple clicking. Uh, you may find differently, maybe it doesn't even affect you, but if you find that you can't tilde click and or click in windows, many windows at the same time, check that first, remove it. Um, it doesn't really bring anything to the game anyway, and um, it's just not very, it's, it's just kind of obnoxious. Set read tuneless.bat to run as administrator. How do you do that, Fury Swipes? How do you do that, man? Um, well, it's different on, on different Windows systems, but I'm on Windows 10 right now. And um, read tuneless.bat is right here. I'm going to go to properties. I'm going to go to um, advanced. No. Oh, no. You got to make a, to, to do, make it run as administrator, you have to make a shortcut out of it. Um, you don't, not everybody will have to do this. So you create a shortcut and you right mouse on the shortcut and you say properties and um, then you can click um, run as administrator in one of these tabs security general advanced um, advanced on this tab ah yeah there it is run as administrator boom and so you instead of dragging and dropping onto your original tuneless.bat, you'll be dragging and dropping onto um, your your shortcut. And of course, that did not work. Mm, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, have administrator permissions. Let's put it that way. And um, let's go back to our readme. Set. You think this will ever work for the Burning Crusade? Of course it will. Yeah. Smitty, what's going on, man? Yeah, of course it will. The classic stuff is going to work really well. Actually, the retail stuff is going to be very easy to map to Burning Crusade. Um, let me think about Burning Crusade buffs and stuff. Eh, probably classic would be better for Burning Crusade. Uh, set hotkey net to run as administrator. Um, 10 language support. Your GSC macros may get translated, or they may get, or they may not. Uh, check when you start leveling. That doesn't actually apply to retail because I do not really give you any GSC macros in retail. I'm going to show you how to make your own and download your own GSC macros. Um, unzip the contents into your retail dir. Okay, so that was where I showed you dragging and dropping the contents right into the directory where your wow.exe is. Edit tuneless.txt. Now we're at tuneless.txt. I've been playing Endless WoW. It's a new TBC server. Okay. All right. Well, the classic client should work on the, the TBC server, but it may need some adjusting. So um, we'll see. All right. So now we're going to go edit our tune list. Let's cover everything up and focus. Um, lines that start with hashtag are comments. They don't do anything in, in your tune list. Um, use a technical editor for this, not Notepad. Notepad tends to invisibly run lines together where you can't see that you've run two lines together and um, it, it will cause your drag and drop to error out. So use Notepad++ or some other editor <laughs> like Vim. I do not recommend Vim. What's up, Mythic? I was going to multibox on there. I want to play together. Good. schmidt has got a friend now. Um, all right. So I've given you some, I've given you some things that you can put in here. First of all, this is really important. The click overlay, the click overlay is a box you draw on the screen. And when you click your mouse in it, it clicks that point on all the other screens. So you can use that for dispelling. You can use that for healing. Um, and you can use it for all kinds of creative things. Uh, so the click overlay, I draw one for you. Okay, at 
uh, a lot of resolutions. It's correct at a lot of resolutions, not all resolutions, uh, but I do draw one for you. You'll have to adjust that um, for your own use when you get ready to really get serious about click healing and click dispelling. Um, fix unused, that doesn't even belong there anymore. There is no fix unused. You can use two monitors by uncommenting use two monitors. All right, so now I'm using two monitors. If I have two monitors, I'll put one, one big window on one monitor, on the main monitor on the left, and then the rest of the windows on the monitor on the right. Okay? Um, but I don't want to do that. All right, so that leads us to an explanation of what the box commands are. The, all of this is just explaining what box commands are. Uh, box command is a line beginning with box. Then it contains your Battle.net account, which I'm going to steal, your Battle.net password, which I'm going to steal, your Battle.net license, which I'm going to steal, and then your tune name, um, dash server name, um, if they're on different servers. If you have tunes on different servers, put um, tune name dash service name, server name. I'm not going to actually steal your uh, Battle.net account, Battle.net password. None of this goes out of your computer. I don't, I don't actually, none of this is net enabled. This is all just local to your computer, of course. I am not going to rob you. I'm not some cheap conjurer of tricks. Um, I don't need your junk. So uh, if you do have a bunch of characters on different servers, though, put dash server, caps don't matter, put dash server behind their tune name. Um, and you do actually have to do that if you're partying up people from, from different servers. It will not work if you do not put their server names. Um, the, the thing that won't work is, is partying up. When you hit the zero key to party up, that's just not gonna work. Uh, everything else will work even if you don't put server names, but party up won't work. Um, by the way, um, Smitty, how is the sound on this stream? really delay it apparently <laughs> so anyway um you, the 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 uh, fifth argument is your name dash server and then the sixth argument is very important that is your role all right your role affects how you move with the keys okay i do a lot of um I do a lot of tricks with HotkeyNet to move casters a certain way or move melee a certain way or move the tank a certain way. So um, get your roles right. There are only five roles, tank, melee, healer, caster, hunter, all right? And um, make sure that these are correct for your guys. If they're not correct, your guys are probably still going to work in retail. Um, it's hard to explain why, but... Uh, you'll you'll get it when you get there. Everybody will still work, but what won't work are some special keys that I made for moving people around for fights and stuff like that. Um, and that's it. That's your tune list. You get those accounts in. Notice I have five accounts here. You can have up to 10 box commands, and it will pop up to 10 windows on your screen. But uh, only the first five box commands you list here are going to be um, windows where everybody will follow that window or everybody will assist that window during combat or whatever. Um, the, the, anything beyond five, those are dumb windows. You can move your mouse to them, you can do stuff in them, but they will only follow assist the first five. So that's how 10 box is working right now on retail. It's fine, it works. We haven't, we haven't downed a raid boss yet. We're, we're trying, we're, we're going to try <laughs> to down a raid boss. Uh, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. Normally when we try to down a raid boss anyway, my wife takes five and I take five. Uh, we may even split it up three ways with my son. He still lives here, so um, we'll see. Uh, we'll see on that. But what we use 10 boxing for really is kind of silly. We use it to have 10 classes in the old raids so you can collect all of the pieces. Um, 
in Retail WoW, you can collect everything. Everything's collectible. And the game tracks everything you've ever touched, you've ever had. But you can only collect something if you wear that type of armor or if you are that class. So when you have 10, you can, you can increase your collection tenfold, 10 times as fast with 10 boxes. So we're kind of collectionators, we're, we're, achievement, we're achievement whores, and um, the 10 boxes also allow us to get some, some 10 man achievements that you couldn't otherwise get. All right, wow, Fury Swipes, you only got through the tune list. You, I thought this was five minute multiboxing. Seems like five hour multiboxing. Shut up, man. Damn. You don't think you could do this in five minutes? Come on. All right, so edit your tune list, put in your info. See tune list for instructions. Note. Still no alt characters are allowed in tune names. I just paid 10 bucks to change one of my characters, actually. Um, he had an alt character in his tune name. I actually worked on it for a little while, two weekends ago, and tried to get alt characters working again. I know it's easy. I, again, I tried to get alt characters working at all. I know it's easy, all right? <clears throat> um, I just don't know how to do it, okay? Yeah, I, I think... I think Ace localization will do it for me, but I haven't got it done yet. So if you figure out how to get alt characters working in my add-on, um, you tell me. Everybody will be very happy to hear that, by the way. A lot of people do use alt characters. Alt characters are characters with like little dots on them or hooks and, you know, little add-ons, <laughs> little upgrades, transmogs to the normal Roman characters. Um, all right. Drag and drop the tune list onto readtunelist.bat. What is dragging and dropping, dude? Dude, what is dragging? I've never heard of dragging and dropping. In the old days, what we did in Windows was we were able to drag and drop files onto other files to make those other files do things. All right, Smitty. All right, Smitty, man. Yeah, you, you do good at work. I'm glad you're working in this day and age. So I'm going to drag and drop. I'm dragging with my left mouse button and dropping on to read tunelist.bat. Bam. Now notice a window pops up, a black window. This is um, a what we call a command shell. And this command shell, I don't want you to just dismiss it or press any key to continue um, or, or close it. Okay. I want you to look to see if there are errors. Uh, this is where your first errors might be. So where, why would this error out for your swipes? Well, it would error out for two or three reasons. One, you screwed up your tune list. All right. And you you messed up the format. You used notepad, you ran lines together, whatever. Um, you screwed your tune list up Two, I don't recognize your keyboard. Okay. I try to recognize everybody's keyboards so that I can I can make the uh, key clicking, sharing key, this key just to the left of one, okay? When you hold that key down and you click in a window, it goes to all windows in multiboxing, all right? So I try to recognize what key that is on your keyboard. If your keyboard isn't recognized, please say something on Discord, we'll add your keyboard to it. Um, and make sure all keyboards of the world are covered, um, except for Chinese keyboards. I mean, I, don't, I have no idea how to support Asian, Asian or Chinese language. A Chinese guy really worked, tried to work with me hard about a month ago, and I worked with him. I really tried. A Chinese guy tried to work with me hard on this, and um, there was just, you know, an obvious language barrier. He was not very good with English, so... He did some stuff for me. Uh, he tried some experiments. I couldn't make it work. So again, maybe that will work when I get alt characters working. Maybe it'll all just come together. Um, it's really difficult though because they, I mean, I can't look for wow.exe, for example, in the directory. I have to look for the Chinese characters because everything's Chinese, even in the directory. Um, so I don't know if that's coming anytime soon. Anyway, if everything's okay here, you either hit um, spacebar or just close it. 
and you're done with that. Now you go back to the readme file. Readme. Everything's about the readme file. Now, what did I do? What happened when I drug and dropped the tune list? I'm going to tell you what happened. Two things happen when you drug and drop that tune list. And this is really important to know. You need to know what two things happen. First, I created this file. This file is called 5MMB HKN for hotkeynet retail for retail.txt. That is the file that you load in hotkeynet that does all the magic, all right? It does half the magic. The other half of the magic's in the add-on. Oh, what add-on? Well, the add-on in interface add-ons, Fury Swipes 5-Minute Multiboxing, Fury Swipes 5MMB. Now, the other thing that dragging and dropping does is it goes into Fury Swipes 5MMB and it changes the add-on. It changes the actual add-on and changes the character names that are listed in the add-on. Notice, these are my character names, all right? So if you have multiple teams, you will have to, to switch teams, you'll have to drag and drop each team's tune list. That's the reason I have drag and drop. So the tune lists can be named different things. Um, so notice um, I have a tune list called dteamforb.txt. All right, I'm not gonna open it because my passwords and, and usernames are in there. Um, but that means this is my D team and it doesn't, it doesn't overlap with anybody on the B team. So I can run the D team and the B team at the same time. I also have C team for A. I can run the C team and the A team at the same time. So my wife can run five boxes, I can run five boxes at the same time. And we very carefully craft these teams in retail so that they have all different armor classes. So when they pick things up, it counts for our achievement, all right? Um, and we craft them so that they are on different servers. You sometimes wanna be on a really busy server and you sometimes wanna be on a really deserted server. It depends on what you're doing in Retail WoW. And so I craft the teams that way so that each team has a choice of servers that it can join. And um, you should too. You should think about stuff like that when you're, when you're building your teams. All right. And, and you, you don't necessarily, and you really do not want to put all your guys on one server. And don't do that. If you're, if you're making a five box team, um, you should pick uh, an array of servers because everybody, when they group together, they operate together. Now, there are some pain in the ass bugs with that, all right? Sometimes somebody can't follow somebody else, but there's always gonna be some combination of people who can follow a leader, okay? You'll understand what I mean when you get into it. Usually it's not fatal. You can just have somebody else um, be the leader and everybody can follow them. All right, back to the readme file. Furious Wipes, this is really longer than five minutes. I'm just saying. You know what? We're going to do it in five minutes. At the end of all this, we're going to do it in 30 seconds. All right, drag and drop the tune list onto read tune list.bat. Wow, we'll open one window. Nope. What is this? Is this readme really the readme I, I put in retail? I really hope not because I think I fixed that already. Okay, WoW will not open one window. That's gone. Um, double click hotkey net dot exe. Man, I really thought I fixed that. Typical me. So now you're gonna open up hotkey net dot exe. But before you open up hotkey net dot exe, ooh, you know what? This is what I'm gonna fill that readme file line with. I'm gonna say, Four, make um, hot key net log dot text read only. All right. How do you do that for your swipes? How do you make it read only? That's so weird. Uh, I will show you. Okay, so 
one of the the banes of multi-boxing existence is multi-box lag that's where you're pressing a key you're pressing a key and the commands you're sending to the other windows seem to queue up and execute slowly over time and lag behind your main guy you can very easily prevent that by making this particular file hotkeynet.log read only so i want you to go to properties i want you to go to security and here's what I want you to do. See where it says everyone? I want you to edit and say deny right. Okay? On that and say yes. Right? You've denied right for everyone. And just do it for everything. Do it, edit, deny right. Oh, look at that. It worked. Edit, deny right. Yep, still denied. And you hit OK. And done. That is read only. Um, it helps HotkeyNet not go into that laggy mode. The other thing that can cause lag is when you open HotkeyNet, where do I, where's my HotkeyNet? When you open HotkeyNet, um, you've got some, some of these panels open. Do not allow last key press to be open unless you're debugging. Do not allow actions on this PC to be open unless you're debugging. Okay, these stay closed, especially if you're 10 boxing, HotkeyNet can lock up. HotkeyNet is like a 15, 14, 13 year old program, 11 year old program. And uh, the dude hasn't worked on it. It's free. The dude hasn't worked on it since then. And um, it's fantastic. It really is. But it does have one or two idiosyncrasies that you have to look out for. And that is, that is one of them. Um, okay. Let's go back to the README file. Click the load script button in HotkeyNet and load your five minute multiboxing.tickle file. Okay, so click this script, go to your retail directory, make sure you're in your retail directory, and I want you to load the file that got produced when you drug and drop. Five minute multiboxing HKN retail. Boink loaded you can click the um show actions on this pc window to make sure there were no errors there okay but as, when you're satisfied there were no errors do unclick that and um uh make sure that you you don't have that enabled let's go back to readme okay scroll lock on all of multiboxing runs on scroll lock, okay? So every keyboard has a scroll lock. If you're on a laptop, you have a scroll lock. You just don't know how to access it. Figure out how to access your scroll lock on your laptop. And um, uh, you can also assign this to caps lock uh, or num lock. I do not recommend either of those. Stick with scroll lock. Um, I'm not gonna do it for you. <laughs> But uh, there is a way to do it. You have to you have to hack some of my files to do it. So scroll lock on. The default raid in five minute multiboxing is um, the default raid is M. So if I hit Control Alt M, it will pop my default raid up. If I have five boxes, it'll pop all five up. If I have ten boxes, it'll pop all ten up. It'll pop everybody in your tune list on Control Alt M. Okay. Now you can actually make your own raid letters besides M. Like notice, there's an F at the end of this box. This box line. That means if I hit Control Alt F, only Fury swipes will pop open. Now you can make as many letters as you want. You make um, G. Put G at the end of that line. Put G at the end of that line. All right, so now if I hit Control-Alt-G, um, Mutalia and Fury Swipes will pop open. So you can make any combination of raids. Um, uh, if you just wanted some clothies, you would put C for cloth. Um, and boom, you've got, you've got a bunch of cloth. All right, Control-Alt-C would, would pop Spirited, JJ and Battlefield. Um, and everybody can be a member of, you know, obviously multiple raids. Now, 
Battlefield is a member of Raid C, A, F, and X. And of course, he's also a member of Raid M, because M is multiboxing. M is the multiboxing raid. M is popping everything open. All right. So we are going to, with scroll lock on. By the way, when scroll lock's on, you can't type. All your typing is going to be screwed up. So when you're trying to chat in game or whether you're trying to type in your tune list, you have to turn scroll lock off because I hijack most of those keys that you're trying to type um, when you're multiboxing. So multiboxing is off for typing, on for multiboxing or popping your windows open. So I'm going to hit control alt M. And now I pop open your windows. This is gonna pop open five windows. Oh, I've got a, I've got an authenticator on some of my windows. I have an authenticator. Ever since my um, account got hacked, you can't hack my account anymore because I have an authenticator now. So um, I can authenticate. <laughs> Let me uh, authenticate these suckers. Ooh, authenticator. Four nine four seven five five seven two. I think that's what it said. Click on it. The problem with the authenticator is you only get one code every ten seconds. And so if you suddenly get a bunch of authenticators on one account, um, it's gonna be a while before you log in. Okay, now you may be asking yourself, fear swipes, why haven't you logged all the way in? You've logged into the select an account screen. Well, um, there's a good reason for that. And that is, um, I don't know how. <laughs> That's the good reason. So here you're going to have to select each of your accounts, but I give you an edge. Let's go back to your tune list. Notice on your tune list, this third, uh, this fourth argument, WoW 1, WoW 2, WoW 3, WoW 4, WoW 5. On your Battle.net account, you can have multiple subscriptions to WoW, but each subscription has a name. We call that name the license. And you'll know what that name is because you have to select it when you log into WoW. Notice my licenses. I've got like the max number of licenses on this account. You can have up to eight licenses on one account, all right? So to get my 10 boxes, I had to have eight licenses on one account. You want all the licenses on one account if you can um, because they share achievements, all right? And they share reputation. Do not make multiple um, or the Warcraft accounts. Keep them, make multiple licenses. Um, so you can see I do have uh, a second account that has two active licenses on it. That rounds me out to 10 licenses. Okay, so even though this account shows four licenses on it, only two are active. And I did that so that I could keep as many people as possible on my main account and share all their achievements, their mounts, their pets, their, um, uh, their, their reputations, um, and their gear. There's a lot of account bound gear that you can only trade between accounts. And even though I own both these accounts, they don't count as the same account. Is that confusing enough for you they don't count as the same account so you can't trade account bound items between these separate world of warcraft accounts so if you screwed up and you made separate world of warcraft accounts instead of adding more licenses you can undo that for 25 bucks a pop and you should you definitely should um and and move people back to the main account Okay, let's go back to the readme. Control-Alt-M, when you are in, close all pop-ups. Well, I kind of fast-forwarded through that. Um, what, I was, what I was trying to tell you was, listing your WoW licenses here allows me to give you a little hint 
at the end of your window name, I don't know if you can see that, but at the end of this window name, it says one WW2. That's a little hint that this is license WoW 2. I don't spell it out in case you're streaming and somebody know, gets to know your license. I, it probably doesn't mean anything, but I mean, some of my licenses are my name, like Todd Tope, that's my name. So, um, you know, I don't want I don't want while you're streaming your your whole name to to be up on the license or whatever to be up on your window. So I just give you a little little tiny code um, that gives you a hint of what the license is. So this one's Wow One. This one is Monique Tope. This one is um, Wow Three. This one is Wow One. And this one is Todd Tope, or Tina Tope, my daughter's name. Okay. So, there you go. Um, now you're in, and we can move on to the rest of the story. Stick with your README file. It's very important. Oh, i got to make sure people aren't asking me questions. I haven't streamed in a long time, so... Um, People probably aren't asking questions. Oh, people are asking questions. Anthony Harding, what's up, man? Greetings from the UK, man. I was just there a few years ago. Man, it was, it's been a while. Um, I went to the Bovington Tank Museum. And I actually went to Dorset in the UK and hung out there for a week just so I could go to the Tank Museum. And I loved it. Um, uh, there was a, a wedding anniversary involved. And, you know, Monique, Monique's into World War II tanks and stuff like that. So um, it was really good. Do I still get the refer, refer a friend discount when all licenses, all licenses are on one account? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. So when you have multiple licenses, make sure you do activate your recruit a friend. Very important. You live in you live in Bournemouth. Uh, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, we yeah we drove through there. Okay, funny Bournemouth story. Um, went to a pub there, and uh, for one reason or another, don't even don't read into it. But I decided on this European trip that I would wear suits everywhere. Okay. Uh, so I was wearing suits every day, coat, tie, everything, right? And it was really weird. I, I didn't look like a normal tourist, I, but I just did it anyway. I had four suits with me. Anyway, here I am, this California guy, much younger, you know, five years younger. I'm, I've been aging like a president these last this last year. Um, and I'm in a pub, and I order I order a pint, and... I think they brought me my pint, right? So I grab it and I start drinking it. And this guy next to me says, Oi! It was this guy's pint. He looked like a freaking working class motherfucker and tough guy. And uh, he did definitely gave off the vibe that he hated foreigners. And I definitely did not look like anybody else in that pub with my stupid suit on and my California accent. Um, so I bought him. I bought him a pint immediately. I said, "Sorry, I'm, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'll buy you a beer." And uh, um, he still looked like he wanted to hit me. It was. I think it was a close thing. I think it. It was very close to happening. There was going to be some some hands thrown that day. Um, but I backed out of it and successfully uh, disarmed the situation, I guess. Um, or he just um, showed some some British spirit. Uh, are you related to Thomas Harding? Thomas Harding? No, it's Thomas Hardy, right? Who's the writer from Dorset? Anyway, uh, we stayed in... Uh, an inn in um, Evershot where I guess he stayed there too. And there's a pub in Evershot that he wrote about in his books or whatever, mentioned it. It's been around for hundreds of years. And we, we hung out there and it was, a good, it was good fun with the people there. All right, 
Nobody cares about that shit, man. When you are in close all pop-ups, yeah, you might have some pop-ups that say, hey, GSE, macros, what's up, man? Do you want to load the, the, the default macros? You can. You can say yes, load the default macros. You can say no. It doesn't matter. There's no wrong answer there because I'm going to show you the right way to start your GSE macros. All right, so hit control I twice to initialize your wild, wild buns. Don't do that twice. You don't need to do it twice, just once. What does control I do? Well, notice and notice the infinite right here. This is this is my my priest, the infinite. The infinite um, has no buttons. Notice all the buttons are gone. No buttons have been initialized. That's because the infinite was just healing a was just healing a um, uh, a dungeon as a healer, but is in shadow form. is is a uh, DPS outside the dungeon. When you join a dungeon as a healer in retail, wow, um, it forces you to become healer spec, and so you have to do an init when you get in the dungeon to load the healer buttons. But when you get out of the dungeon, you're still you're still DPS, okay? And since you knitted in the dungeon as holy, when you get out as shadow, you have to do another init. Now everybody does an init on control I. What is init? What is init Fury Swipes? Init is just a command you run inside um, inside WoW that uh, populates all your buttons for multiboxing. Um, when you're multiboxing with five minute multiboxing, you're gonna use my buttons unless you decide you don't wanna. Um, I recommend you use my buttons for multiboxing. They work, you can do everything with them. Um, you can have plenty of fun with my buttons. Uh, <laughs> that sounded funny. Uh, and, and here's what we're gonna do. We're, control I with scroll lock on, control I makes everybody type slash init in their window, all right? Everybody type slash init. You can init one window at a time by typing slash init, okay? But when you type slash init, it puts all the buttons in place. So notice uh, the infinite up here on the, on the left, upper left is now populated. She has her buttons up. I'm closing this add-on that's really annoying. All the things, this is a um, collecting add-on and it always pops up and it's really obnoxious. Okay, so notice the buttons are all here, the buttons on the side are here. Um, everything's good. Now, this is where it gets kind of complicated and I need you to stick with me and really look at the readme file. Um, notice that you now have buttons that match your spec e.g. single FS. It contains click fury single or some such. We will pretend you're a fury warrior. Now, download a cool, awesome single target macro from Wow Lazy Macros. Name it fury single. That is now your macro. Do the same for fury multi. Do the same for fury AOE. Fury turbo. Fury setup. Okay. What do these, what do all these buttons do? By the way, these buttons are listed right here. Button one, button two, button three, button four, button five. Okay, those are the main buttons of multiboxing. One, two, three, four, five. Setup is button one. Setup will buff you before a fight. So it'll cast Fortitude if you set it up that way. It'll cast Battle Shout if you set it up that way. This is all your responsibility. I'm going to get into GSE here in a moment, but I just want to talk concepts right now. Single, that is when you want everybody to attack a single target. Multi, that is when you want everybody to attack multiple targets that may be at range. They're not, they're not necessarily around you, although they could be. Um, but you're not necessarily popping Arcane Explosion for multi, on the multi button. Okay, You'll cast Chain Lightning, but you're not going to cast Earthquake. All right? Turbo, that's a button that casts all your, your long cooldowns to burst damage, you know, in a boss fight or something. 
And then finally, my favorite button, AOE, five. That is the button where you have people surrounding, you have mobs surrounding you, and you cast Arcane Explosion, you cast Earthquake, you cast every single um, uh, AOE type thing. Rain of Fire on yourself, you know, Blizzard on yourself, whatever. Those are the five multi-boxing boxing buttons. We keep it simple in multi-boxing, okay? Now, have I given you a few extra buttons that are important in, in winning? Yes, I've given you a few extra buttons. I'll talk about them later. But right now, we need to populate those buttons, those multi-boxing buttons. Now, what do I mean populate? Well, let's take this death knight for example if you go into your macros after you pop five minute multi-boxing and you do an init you'll notice that in the global macros i will have given you these first five buttons setup single multi turbo aoe look at single single is is a simple macro that says slash click blood which is my spec right my spec is blood this is the spec name underscore single all right single means single target so what that means is every time i hit that button it's going to send that click to a gse macro what's gse fury swipes i don't know what gse i don't want to use gse i don't why, why should i use gse why can't i just do regular macros you can't because if you try to do just regular macros, you're going to be terrible. Um, you won't be able to multi-box in either classic or retail. You just won't, um, because not effectively anyway, because the macros are too small. You can only put 255 characters in what I call a simple macro. So remember this, this M, blood single, right? 255 characters max. Right? It's even worse than that. You are limited what you can put in a single macro, what you can make happen in a single macro. You can only make one spell happen on one click. All right? And if you list a bunch of spells in this macro, like cast um, Death Strike, cast Rune Weapon, cast um, what are some other <laughs> Death Knight things? I don't know cast other death knight spell it will only click the first one ever okay it won't if the first one's not up if it's on cooldown it won't go to the next ones that's not how macros work that's not how they work since burning crusade all right um so to play smart you've got to um be smart and to be smart you've got to use GSC. Let's fly over to a target dummy. We're going to fly over to the target dummy at um, Temple of the... What is it called? I don't know WoW lore, guys. Come on, man. I hardly know how to play WoW. Uh, mm, what is this called? Shrine of the Two Moons. All right. I remember now. Shrine of the Two Moons. Okay, so here's a, here's a target dummy. Okay, so I've got my five guys here at the target dummy. If I hit the two button, they're all going to attack. Okay. Everybody's going to do DPS. I've got my little DPS meter here. Looks like pause and reflex <laughs> pops something important. <laughs> I have no idea what. But he pops something important is doing like 180,000 DPS. Um, I don't know why that sometimes happens. Like I said, I don't know how to play WoW. Um, it looks like the the uh, the Shadow Priest, who, who Shadow Priest do terrible damage in in live WoW, by the way. Um, also pops something. So um, let me just make sure I get my questions. In it. In it in the UK is slang for isn't it in it uh, it's used more like a confirmation than a question in it um, yes I do know this I do know this okay now when you try that after loading five-minute multiboxing not a damn thing's gonna happen 
because you don't have anything assigned to click blood single. There you go, click blood single. Click blood single is defined in GSE, GNOME Sequencer Enhanced. GSE is a cool add-on that allows you to make macros that do a lot more than you could ever do in the original macro system. To open GSE, type GS, okay, slash GS. Now, once you get into GS, you're going to see or not see a bunch of macros. You might see some sample macros from GS. GS actually allows you to, provides you with some sample macros, okay? They're garbage, pretty much. Um, you're not gonna use those, you're gonna, you're gonna use your own. But let's take blood single, for example. I downloaded a macro off the internet for blood single. And when I go into it, look how complicated it is. Look how much is in it. Um, a lot more than 255 characters, I tell you what. Uh, you've, got, you've got a ton of stuff here that does the rotation for a death knight. And I'll put all of, I'll explain all of GSE in a different video. But for now, you don't need to understand GSE that much, okay? All you need to do is know how to do one thing. See this button right here? Import. That's all you need to know. Import. So now you're gonna go to, you're gonna go to uh, a website that has GSE macros on it. The one I use is the one maintained by the guy who wrote GSE and it's called wow lazy macros so you just go to wow lazy macros and you find your spec death knight blood all right sort by number of views okay he's only got a few sorts here activity number of views replies um click on it this is Elf Yao's Blood DK 8.3 macro. Elf Yao's, he seems to put up a lot of macros. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. Um, you have to try them yourself. See all this gobbledygook here? Just copy and paste all of that. Copy all of that, hit Control C, paste it over here, Control V, hit Import. Boom, that macro's in. Now, what it did to me, it said, I already have a macro called Blood Elf because I've already imported this one. So um, I'm just going to close out of that. Let me import something I've never imported. Let me go down the list. Pawn DK Blood BFA. Nope. He is just asking, asking a question. Roars Blood DK. Fine. We're going to import Roars Blood DK. Um, and what you're gonna do is, oops, don't go there, go to import. You're going to um, test these and you're gonna decide which one is best. Now, okay, I've imported uh, Roar's Blood DK. You can see down here, it says in your chat window, I imported Roar's Blood DK. I'm gonna go to Roar's Blood DK, I'm gonna right click it and then, um, usually they give you a little helpful information about it, all right? You're gonna see them mention things like milliseconds a lot, 50 milliseconds, 70 milliseconds. That's because they use auto clickers to run their macros. They, use, they press a button and it clicks that macro, it clicks that button at every 50 milliseconds or whatever. We're not gonna do that, we're just gonna click buttons because we're multi-boxers. They could get us, they could ban us for using auto clickers if we did. Um, so I'm, I, I'm recommending people don't use auto clickers. Just, just click your finger and, and it'll be fine. Now, every macro can have multiple configurations, but I want you always just to look at configuration one. If there's a two tab, three tab, four tab, five tab, that's for other stuff. It's like for mythic dungeons and stuff like that. Just go to the one key, look at it, satisfy yourself yeah this looks like a macro and what you're going to do is you're going to save it as and this it's this simple guys you're going to save it as turn scroll lock off blood single you don't have a blood single macro yet 
because you just initialized, all right, for the first time ever. But now you're going to save it as blood single. And of course, this is going to say uh, um, blood single is already taken, all right? And because um, I already have a blood single, so it's not going to save as blood single. But um, then you have a blood single macro. And now when you hit the two button, you're going to do shit. Okay? You are doing stuff. Rah! You have to do that for blood single. You have to find an AOE macro or a multi multi target macro for blood multi, or you have to edit it. Um, you have to edit your blood single macro to be multi, and you have to find an AOE macro. So a lot of people will put in, will make up macros like um, just for AOE. Uh, I don't, I'm not seeing any here, but uh, it's kind of something, it, when in doubt, just use the single macro as multi and AOE, all right? But usually you can find an AOE macro on wild lazy macros for your class. And when you find that AOE macro, all you're going to do is you're gonna find it, like, um, let's pretend, uh, Sam Blood is an AOE macro that you downloaded. You're just going to change the sequence name. You're going to say change it to Blood AOE, and you're going to hit the Save button, right? Then it'll save that. It's not changing. This macro will still be there, and it'll still be named Sam AOE. It's creating a new macro when you save it of that new name, which is kind of cool. So you can you can back up your macros and you can save them to different names very easily. I know this is all new to you and this is all going really fast, but it really is simpler than it sounds. It's also more complicated than it sounds, but we're gonna approach it um, as very simple, simply as we possibly can. And that is um, just download somebody else's macro, learn the rest later. As long as you have something in those macros, you can learn the rest later. Now, the one thing I do want you to learn yourself is for buffing characters, okay? For buffing characters like priests. What I want you to do is I want you to create your setup macro for your spec. So my spec is, I'm gonna scroll down here and look at my single macro. My spec is shadow single, okay? So I'm gonna create a macro in GSE called shadow setup. Right, shadow setup is clicked every time I hit the one key. Do I have a shadow setup here? I don't even have it. I've not even set this up. I've been playing retail WoW for about a month now and I've not even set this up. So I'm gonna hit new, I'm gonna hit, turn scroll lock off to type shadow setup, save, whatever. Go to config one. Oh, I saved and left. Go to config one. In Instead of say hello, erase say hello in the sequence. And I want you to put cast at player, that at player means cast on myself, power word fortitude. Or whatever buff you have for that class, okay? Save. Now when you hit the one key, I'm going to cast Power Word Fortitude on myself. Of course, I have to have Scroll Lock on, Power Word Fortitude, bam. Do I have Power Word Fortitude in Shadow? Maybe I don't. Oh, I do. Power Word Fortitude, did I spell it wrong? Oh, no, I, I, I didn't spell the macro right. I spelled the macro Shadow Set 2. Scroll Lock off, Shadow Set Up, bam. Check again, it's power word fortitude in there, whatever, I'm sure I'm right, so good. Scroll lock on, one key. Ooh, I cast power word fortitude on myself. And in retail WoW, when you cast a buff on yourself, you cast it on everybody in your party, okay? I don't know if it works on everybody in your raid. I think it does, everybody in your raid. So notice everybody has power word fortitude now. If I had a buff on somebody else, um, okay, Frazzled. I haven't set up Frazzled. So what is Frazzled? Frazzled is a mage, all right? 
Frazzled as a mage, so I'm going to go down to see what her spec is. What, what She's loaded as arcane. Is that true? Yeah, she's set up as arcane. So I'm going to create a GS macro called arcane setup for her. And the only thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast my buff. Cast at player. And I don't even know what the buff is called, so I'm gonna have to open up my spell book. Arcane intellect? It's arcane intellect, right? Arcane intellect. Save. Arcane setup was updated to new version. All right, fine. Now when I hit my setup button with scroll lock on, boom, arcane intellect is cast on everybody. Now everybody has arcane intellect. Why did fortitude go away? Oh, I can only see the buffs that I can cast. Okay, made me, made me panic for a second. Did fortitude go away? So, this is a long process. Picking the macros you want to do single, multi, AOE, um, pick, making the macro to do your setup, I don't do that for you, all right? I don't have time to do that for you, but I did make it very easy for you to do it for yourself. And in any case, it's fun to do it for yourself because in Retail WoW, you can just stand at a target dummy and you can you can download GSE macros and mess with your GSE macro all day long until you are getting numbers that you like. Okay? If you if you stand at the target dummy and you're not getting numbers that you like, you need to work on your shit. You need to work on your shit. And you need to change your GS macros until you get the numbers you want. Dude, I have no idea what's causing these 100,000 DPS numbers. Uh, they pop some buff. I don't know. It might be their Heart of Azeroth buff or something. I don't know. But it happens, and you get these ridiculous numbers, and I don't know. I don't know why. But I'm, I'm happy with those numbers. Okay? So I'm happy with those numbers. Um, now... These, this is the, the wrong target dummy to test AoE. If you go to Ogamar, you'll find, I guess this target dummy is okay for AoE. So I'm gonna hit the five button. Notice I'm, I'm popping Arcane Explosion now. Um, I, there's an earthquake from the Shaman. Um, the priest is, is, well, the priest is doing stupid Shadow Priest shit, but if it was a Holy Priest, he would be popping um, Holy Nova and um, we're getting, I don't know, stupid and ridiculous numbers here. Is everybody confirming these numbers? Yeah, these numbers are confirmed in other people's windows. I have no idea why we're getting so It's because the dummies are, oh, it's because the dummies are so low. It's because the dummies are such a low level. In Retail WoW, when you are 10 layer levels higher than your target, be it in an old raid, old dungeon, anything, um, except for PvP. Um, when you're 10 le levels higher than your target, you get a magnified and exponentially uh, bigger um, damage over those targets and exponentially less damage done. What's up, EA Equing? My dad used uh, Elf Yao's Unholy in Blood. Did a really nice rotation. Oh, nice. Okay. We're talking GS here, man. Shit. So, now the other very important macro to set up for yourself. It's my recommendation. You don't have to do it this way. But I recommend you set up your turbo macro. So, everybody has a, a, a turbo macro associated with button four, all right? When you hit button four, it'll click that turbo macro. What I put in my turbo macro is in the sequence box, I put every single cooldown I can pop, 
okay, in the sequence box. So whenever I hit the four button, if those cooldowns are available, I will pop them. Now you can see I didn't do it on my death knight. So what I would do on my death knight is I would scan through my I would scan through my my um, spells and see if there was some cool cooldown I could put in the sequence button. Put your best one first. You can list a, a row of them. Put your best one first, and um, um, and 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 decreasing in order of um, effectiveness. I don't. And does he really have anything? I don't see any big cooldowns here. I mean, the main cooldown is activating your pendant in Retail WoW, and that is cast. I'm going to say no mod. So cast only if I'm not holding the Alt, Shift, or Control key, uh, and only if I'm in combat. Um, heart Essence. All right. Save that. Now, the other thing I'd like you to put in the turbo button, just so that we all do it the same way, is I would like you to put a mount in your turbo button that only springs on if you have the control key pressed. I know it's hard to see this font. Let me let me make it bigger. So notice I have in when the key is pressed, cast open square bracket mod colon control CTRL close square bracket X53 touring rocket. All right? That means if I press button four with control key held down, it's gonna pop my mount. All right. If I press button four without control key de held down, without any keys held down, it's going to pop heart essence only if I'm in combat. Notice I added combat to that. So we're going to save that. We're going to go over here and we're going to hit control four. X53 touring rocket pops. All right. Every, I have everybody set up to pop their mounts on control four. Okay. So control four is pop your mount. Control four is also get off your mount. So if I'm in combat and I hit four on my death knight, I should pop heart essence. And indeed I did pop heart essence. Um, Concentrated flame is my heart essence. What is a heart essence in retail? Wow. Well in retail Wow, we all get a necklace I hate this part of retail Wow, but we all get a legendary necklace and the thing in the middle is The spell you cast when you cast the spell heart essence. All right, so in my case, it's concentrated flame Because that's the essence I have loaded I'll explain more about how, what to do in retail WoW at level 120, uh, because I had to learn all of this in the last three or four weeks. I had to learn how to play retail WoW. And there's no real good place online for somebody who just jumped into retail WoW at level 120, which is what I did, um, and d doesn't know anything about retail WoW, and, which is what I didn't. I did not know anything. So I'm gonna make some videos that show you guys what to do in Retail WoW. Um, so all of you guys who are playing Classic right now, all of you guys could play Retail WoW. You might not have purchased BFA, you might not have purchased all the expansions, but you probably own an expansion. And so whatever expansion you're on, you could probably five box or three box or however many boxes you are, that expansion and have a lot of fun. Um, you can also pay the bills by five boxing in retail. Wow. What do I mean by pay the bills? Well, you can make money fast in retail. Wow. By farming or, um, crafting or doing something that people want running people through dungeons, right? You can make a lot of money fast. And if you make enough money to buy a token on the auction house, you can pay for a month of your wow subscription so if you can buy five tokens a month you can pay for your wow subscription you can play for free and by five boxing it's a lot easier to to do that in a lot of ways 
Um, so you can pay your own way just by putting a few hours or maybe a day in each month of play just to finance your wow now i haven't started doing that yet maybe i will do that someday in the future so um but first we're just trying to multi-box okay and here we are we've learned how wow somebody's invited me to join their guild in some no that's a terrible guild name um so multi-boxing now you're in retail wow uh, Fury Swipes, uh, how do you people follow your leader like that? Um, when you turn on the scroll lock, you are in multi-boxing mode. And now, whenever you hit Alt-4, a special key combo, Alt-4, if you hit Alt-4, everybody follows the guy where your mouse is. If your mouse is over in this upper left window, everybody follows that guy. If the mouse is over in this upper middle window and you hit Alt-4, everybody follows that guy. Over here in the upper right window, everybody follows that guy. And it's more than just following. If I go over to this target dummy, watch, nobody's, no, okay. Everybody is selecting that target dummy. If I go over to this target dummy, different target dummy, nobody's selecting that target dummy. But the instant I hit two, everybody targets my target. Okay, if I go over to stream and stream goes over here, guess what? Everybody targets stream, streams target. So, boom. Now notice, pause and reflect. The um, pause and reflect is, is the monk. He ran over to stream's target. Stream is gonna switch targets. She's the upper left hand one. Now everybody's trying to shoot at their target. But these guys are all facing in the wrong direction. So you gotta kinda, hit ff to make them turn in the right direction and come over to your new target now i'm back at cheat i'm hit alt 4 we're running away all of that happens because of the way i wrote the script for hotkey net hotkey net is doing all the movement mag magic it's doing all the alt 4 magic um part of the magic is in the add-on fury swipes 5 mmb much of the magic is in the hotkey net script okay um you don't have to understand it you just have to know yes when i hit alt four everybody follows now fury swipes how am i going to know all this stuff how am i going to know all these controls you've got like one two three four five you got all four you got control four how am i going to know all this um I put it all on a wiki on Reddit. You can go to the Classic WoW wiki. The Classic WoW control system is a little different from retail. Retail is a little looser, um, but retail kind of follows the Classic WoW. I'm going to make a new retail one um, soon because I'm liking retail a lot. And uh, don't worry, I will um, I will give retail a lot of love. I'll give it its own wiki. Um, but, but really a big part of retail is you making your own stuff. What's up, Lord Bebop? Too much time and work. What's an easy gold farm when five boxing like raw gold? It's not that easy to make gold without professions and professions take time and money as a new player. Well, professions in live wow take much less time than professions in old wow because, um, there's hardly any profession leveling anymore. Your profession leveling is very different than it used to be. Profession leveling is more like running some quests. You run a bunch of quests uh, in a certain zone and boom, you're through that level of cooking. You run a bunch of quests in a certain zone and boom, you're through that level of mining. All right, so it's a lot easier to get to max level professions in uh, Retail WoW than it used to be. Now, you said you said um, too much time and work. Um, I think you meant by by that you meant professions are too much time and work. You can also snipe the auction house. You can learn how to buy and sell things on the auction house for quick money. Um, that's also time and work. Look, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. If you want to make a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand gold in a few days in retail, wow, you can do it, and that's about what it takes to buy a token for a month's um, uh, playtime. But it is going to take practice. It's going to take savvy. 
It's going to take knowledge of what sells. Um, in short, it's going to take experience, real experience, not leveling experience, real experience, um, learning how to do it. I don't have time for that. I'm not going to do it. I'd rather just pay my money. Um, it's the cost of running 10 boxes is the same as buying one Starbucks cup of coffee per day. All right. It's not that big a deal. So I can run 10 boxes without even thinking about it. Um, and I'm not worried about it. I'm here to have fun. And the way I have fun is I do something and I get a cookie. I go do something and I get a cookie. It's not so much PVP for me anymore. It's very, it's mainly PVE. Now there may be some PVP in the future, but PVP in retail WoW now is all in the battlegrounds. You can run around in war mode and find people in war mode because there are really no PVP and PVE servers, even though there are, but everybody can turn off PVP. Um, I don't know how prevalent it is for people to run around in war mode on PVP servers. Maybe it's prevalent. Maybe I don't know. But the difference between the people who are well geared and the people who are geared like you is so vast that you can just be instantly vaporized by somebody if you're running around in war mode without the very best gear on. So be aware of that. I haven't delved into that yet, and I'm not going to anytime soon because I'm having too much fun in PVE. There's a lot of fun stuff to do in PVE, um, mainly centered around the 8.3 patch and running horrific visions. Um, but I'll get into that in, in another video. Meanwhile, we need to finish our readme. So we talked about step 12. Step 12 is a long step. That's where you download GS macros for your specs. You can start with just a single macro um, and you can start killing things right away. By the way, GS gives you some sample macros. All right, so as soon as you load GS, it says, do you want some sample macros for your class? Yes. Look at those macros, rename one of them Fury Single or Arcane Single or Frost Single, whatever it is, rename one of them Single and away you go, you're already playing. Um, all right, step 11, hit the zero key twice in your main window to invite switch to free for all loot for your party. Okay, so let's pretend we're not partied up. Boink. All right, we're not partied up. Notice the alt four key works even when you're not partied up. I really like that. I'm trying to keep it that way, but there may come a time when it stops working that way. All right, um, it's a long story, but it has to do with running 10 boxes. So it may not, it may not always work that way, but right now it works that way. Alt four doesn't care if you're in party. Now hit the zero button on whoever you want to be the party leader. It matters, all right? Because I have a guy who is from server Natherzeem, but I have a lot of guys from server Scenarius. Now, what if I want to be on Natherzeem? Well, if I use, if I move my mouse over to the guy on Natherzeem in the upper right and hit the zero key, he invites everybody. You might have to click it a few times. It'll pop up and say, hey, you've kept clicking. Do you want to convert to a raid? No, you don't want to convert to a raid. So now we're in Natherzeem. We're on the server Natherzeem. And, um, He's my leader over there, but it doesn't matter. I can move my mouse back here and my Death Knight's still my leader, but now I'm on Natherzeem. I'm not on Scenarius anymore. And Natherzeem is a slightly more populated, it's a, it's a fairly more populated server than Scenarius. Scenarius is a deserted server. So I get on Scenarius when, um, what is this guy? I get on Scenarius when uh, I want to find rares, right? Because nobody's grabbing them, right? Um, or when I want to get to something that, you know, maybe a lot of people might want like a rare mount flying in the sky. Well, I'll go to Scenarius to try and find that. Now I'll go to Natherzeem when I want help. Like a lot of times you'll have a world boss up and you'll want help. You want help from other people. It's better to be on a more populated server from that to download for that to download to down world bosses. What are these guys doing? So here's an alliance. This is what alliance looks like now in um, 
in retail. I think orange means they. I think orange means they don't have war mode on. Maybe orange means they have war mode on. I have no idea. I think orange means they don't have war mode on. Red means I think if they have war mode on and you have war mode on, they're red. Maybe orange means I don't have war mode on. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know retail. Wow, this is gonna be the blind leading the blind. But I'm doing well, man. Um, like, uh, look. Pause and reflect, my monk. He's item level 423. He's going up fast, okay? 470 is the highest in the game right now, I think, or 4, 485. So, um, and of course, I'll never get that gear because that's high-end raiding gear. So, where are we on our readme? Hit zero key and that parties you up. Interface options, turn all action bars on. Um, interface, action bars, turn them all on, on all your windows so you can see the right side action bar. I'll explain that in a second. Read me more. Um, Alt four to make everyone one follow, we already talked about that. Two to attack a single target. F twice to make all tunes attack or talk to a target. What does F twice mean? What are you talking about F twice, brah? Well, this is the best part of multiboxing in retail or classic. They gave you interact with target. Interact with what, dude? Dude, what are you talking about? Interact with what? I don't know what he's talking about. What is he talking about? Interact with target. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna demonstrate to you what interact with target is if i could find even a single mob where the hell are all the mobs okay we got some mobs here okay let's get down we're going to get off our mount with control four so that's the way i set it up i'm going to pull a mob over we're all going to fight it boom 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 we fight the mob fight that mob boom 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 okay so we fought these mobs right now i want everybody to uh click on this body and try to loot it. I could tilde click, try to tilde click in a window. What is tilde clicking? Tilde clicking is holding that button down next to the one key and clicking in, in one of the windows. Everybody clicks the same place in the window there. But there's a better way to do it now. And the better way to do it is with interact with target. I'm gonna hit the five key. Since we got a bunch of guys, we're gonna do AOE. Wow, these guys have a knockback. I'm gonna hit Alt-4 to bring people in again. All right, so I'm gonna click on one of these bots. Hey, get back here, sucker. Where you going? Where you going, sucker? These guys are keeping us in combat. Overpull! One of the, one of the banes of multiboxing is you keep clicking two or three or whatever in combat, or five, and when, the, when you mean for combat to be over, nope, they keep clicking and they, and they shoot at something else and they overpull because of that. All right, so if I if I highlight a body, oh my gosh, I'm, and I hit F twice, the first time they're gonna assist me, notice they're all looking at that dead body. The second time, they're gonna interact with that dead body and they're gonna loot it, all right? That's called interact with target. It also works on mobs. If I hit F twice, everybody's gonna run toward that mob and interact with it. That is everybody who would normally run to a mob. Mages won't run to a mob because that's not how they interact with targets. Um, but um, shaman and uh, monks, they'll run to the target if you hit F twice. Let's try that again. Click on a target. Doesn't matter how far away the target is. If I click on a target, I hit F twice, they're gonna go interact with that target. Notice the mages even are interacting now. They're running within range, okay? So they all ran within range. So I'm just gonna hit the two key. I'm gonna um, continue. I'm gonna switch to the three key since there's a lot of mobs in front of me. And now I'm gonna gather everybody up and I'm gonna hit the five key because I do what I want. I do what I want. I like the AOE. 
Okay, now we only have a couple mobs left, so let's stop messing with the five key and head back to the one key. FF if people get turned around. If people are turned around, when you're multiboxing, it's very common for people to get turned backwards, whatever. FF will make them turn toward their target. Interact with target is an awesome, awesome addition to classic WoW multiboxing and um, retail WoW multiboxing. Now I'm gonna click one of these, these bodies, hit F twice, and you will see the issue with clicking bodies and hitting F twice. Sometimes you'll click a body that isn't sparkling to somebody. If the body isn't sparkling to them, they won't interact with it. And so F twice won't make them do the AOE loot thing. So you'll have to go over to their, their window and you'll have, to, um, you'll have to click on the loot. So, but interact with target has another feature that is the best. And I'm gonna show you what that is. by going to Shrine of Two Moons. Mythic says, anybody multi-box classic WoW? Yeah, I've, got, I've hit 60 on five accounts. I have three accounts running and want someone to play with and bounce ideas off of. Yeah, I won't be playing classic anytime soon. Is it possible to switch which tune is your main window with hockey net? I can't figure it out. Yes. Thank you for asking that question. So on five minute multiboxing, um, if you go to the numpad keys, numbers one through five on the numpad keys tell you who is the big window. So if I want, say, pause and reflect the, the um, monk in the upper right window to be um, my main window i just hit the four key and it switches the monk to your big window um, the windows are numbered one two three four five as you log in one is your big window and then clockwise around two three four five um, just hit the one window again if you want your main window to be your original guy two two numpad three numpad four numpad five numpad simple as that if you get mixed up or your windows get resized um, or, you know, if for some other reason a window is minimized or whatever, you can, you can always go back to your original window arrangement by hitting shift control M, right? Or whatever raid letter you use to log in, shift control M. Um, it will put your windows back to their original configurations. Um, So you're using the private server version and it doesn't have that. Yeah, I don't, I didn't have that. I didn't have that in, in vanilla. Sorry about that. Probably not gonna add it anytime soon. What did we have in vanilla? What could we do? Ah, no, it's too impractical. I'll never add that for vanilla because we're 40 boxing in vanilla. So when you're 40 boxing in vanilla, you're on a private server. Why are you running five boxes? You should be running 40 boxes. So, um, yeah, that's never going to go in there. It's more of a classic or retail thing. All right, so where was I? Oh, I was in the best part of Interact with Target. Oh, look at that Flight Master. I'm going to hit F twice. My guys are going to go over there, and they're going to interact with her. They opened up her shit. Now you might notice that my main guy did not go over and interact with target. That's because whenever, whatever your main guy is, I turn that off because interact with target is a fucking pain in the ass on your main window. You do your interacting with target on your main window, bro. Don't make every button press interact with target on your main. It's a pain in the ass. You do not want it. It's horrible. So I only do it for the um, add-on windows. Why are we fighting her? Hope she's not mad. Um, F twice, interact with target. Um, by the way, F twice does work um, if you're standing next to the target. It does work on your main if you're standing next to the target. The thing that doesn't work is running up to the target, okay, and interacting with it. So, um, we could 
take a flight path all together. Now, how do you take a flight path all together in a situation like this, Fury Swipes? Well, it's that till the click key, that key next to the one button, to the left of the one button, hold it down, and when you click in a window, it clicks in all the windows in the same place. Now, there's one caveat to that. Big windows don't click in the same place as smaller windows. All right, they often misalign each other, okay? So what I want you to do is when you're tilde clicking, I want you to click in one of the smaller windows because it's better, it's better to get four windows right and one wrong than one window right and four wrong. And so click individually in the big window. Do all your tilde clicking in the small window normally, all right? And, you know, click once in your big window. Anthony Harding says, not yet, Mythic. I need to build a new PC first. Been learning the basics with Fury Swipes first in preparation. All right. Okay. So let's go back to our README. Have we learned everything from the README file? Okay. Healing. F1 to F5 heals the main window, then the next window clockwise. All right, so let's talk about healing as soon as we land. This was a really short flight path, right? Yes. Okay, so we're going to land here, and we're going to talk about healing. There's a longer flight path than I expected. Okay, so what do I mean by F1 to F5? Hey, someone's getting attacked over here. Oh my gosh, we're phased. Yeah, one of the one of the worst parts of Retail WoW is phasing, and I'm actually going to need to heal her. So um, we're going to heal Frazzled with F5. Frazzled is the fifth window, so anytime I hit F5, um, I heal Frazzled. Now, we can't even see Frazzled because we're phased, um, but we can still heal her even though we're phased. I'm gonna keep hitting the five key while I hit the F5 key. So I'm actually mending Frazzled while Frazzled is killing things. Why are we phased, Fury Swipes? I don't know. It's because it's stupid. Retail WoW is stupid, man. No, we're phased because um, we are all at different levels of progression in this area. And this doesn't happen as much in the new zone, so you don't really have to worry about it much, but it is a pain in the ass at times, like just now. So the F keys, F1 through F5, or if you're 10 boxing, F1 through F10, um, but I don't want you actually using the function keys um, in um, in 10 boxing. In 10 boxing, it's too difficult to memorize which window is which function key. So you're not gonna you're not gonna do that. Um, it looks like Earthshock is and Frazzled are out here together. So they're the ones getting in trouble. All right, I don't like this place. We are hearthing out of here. I don't want to be phased. All right, now I've gotten you through the entire readme. And um, the last thing I want to talk about is step 16, click healing. So if you type, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the, the healer's window big, all right? If you turn Squirrelock off and type slash C-L-I-Q-U-E, you are going to be in the click heal window. And the click heal window is super easy, barely an inconvenience. Basically, it is a window where you can bind a spell to a mouse key. So let's say I wanted to, um, whenever I clicked one of my guys, 
all right in my in my um uh in my party with my right mouse button boink okay instead of opening a menu i would heal them right i do i don't really want to overwrite that menu i want that menu to be there let's say if i click one of the guys with my left mouse button anytime i click one of the guys with my left mouse button i would heal them so i would type slash click bind spell and pick my spell whatever spell i click on i will cast that spell and the click spell i'm going to click on is shadow mend okay I've assigned Shadow Mend. It's as simple as that. Close everything. Now, when I click on Frazzled, I cast a Shadow Mend on Frazzled. When I click on Pause and Reflect, I cast a Shadow Mend on Pause and Reflect. Now, why is this all significant? You want me to move my mouse over that window and click Heal in that window? No, you don't have to do that because I've given you, as part of 5-Minute Multiboxing, a little square here on the right side of your raid box when you click in that square it actually transmits that click to all the other windows so if i click with multiboxing on um i don't think it's really adjusted for this for this one is it if i click here supposedly it's not working right now because I don't think it's adjusted for the size of my screen, I guess. Then it will share the clicks to all the other windows. And um, it is not. I am not sure why that's going on there. Are we multiboxing? We are multiboxing. We're in a party. Click heal should be working. But it's not working. Oh. Oh. Is it because? It only works in the first window you've ever popped. All right, so it only works in the main window. If you like switch somebody to the main window, click heal is not gonna work on their window. But it will always work, it should always work, in your main window and i'm not actually sure why click heal is not working right now so um i will sort that out but it is not working clicking here should have everybody targeting whoever i'm clicking on and um normally it works but maybe i broke it i don't think i broke it um i can't i can't open my my text file while you guys are watching because my passwords and stuff are in there so i i can't fix this while you guys are watching but trust me it does work don't know why it's not working right now but in any case it might not work for you anyway bec because the click heal box isn't in the right place but uh, you can like i said change your tune list change the click heal box numbers and set them in exactly the right place. I'll, there's another video on Click Heal. You can watch it. Um, I've already explained Click Heal ad nauseum, so you can just watch my Click Heal video. So, Fury Swipes, what else does your add on do? I notice you have some other buttons here. All right, let's talk about the other buttons. Okay, so the other buttons I give you in 5 Minute Multiboxing standard are Shift 2. This button right here, if you hit, it, this bar is a shift bar. Anytime you hit shift and a key, it presses the buttons on this bar. This bar is the no shift bar. Um, anytime you hit control or alt or um, just the button itself, it will press one of these buttons on your main action bar. Um, shift will not press any of these buttons on your main action bar. It will press only the buttons on the second action bar. Okay, so it's a way to get more buttons, basically. But Shift 2 is Polymorph. Any class that has a crowd control spell, okay, like Polymorph, Hex, para Paralysis, whatever, if you hit Shift 2, if you target that target with your main, I'm on my main, right, and I target a target, and I say shift two, they will try to polymorph that target. Notice they said invalid target, all right? They can't polymorph that guy because he's not polymorphable. But um, 
if I had a target to polymorph, and I'm, I'm about to, um, Shift 2 will poly that target. Let's go over to Silithus real quick, because I got to go there anyway. I think there's some mobs around here. Okay, so target that guy. Poly I, does anybody have a polymorph for elementals? No, I don't have a warlock, so I can't poly him. But if I had a warlock in my party, he would be polyed. That guy would have been totally polyed, dude. Let's go find something we can poly. Dude, how do you fly like that? I mean, you just like jump into the air and then fly? What, how does that work? Well, flying is tricky in multiboxing in retail, um, mainly because you go up with the space bar and flying, but anytime you hit the space bar and flying, you stop following, and we wanna follow. So what I do to fly is I hit control four, we all get on our flying mounts, space bar, get off the ground, alt four, follow me. Everybody cast their poly on that poor guy. The uh, monk hexed him. Uh, the shaman, the shaman hexed him. The monk paralyzed him, and I think the mage also tried to poly him. Yes, the mage sheeped him. Okay, what other keys do I give you? All right, uh, let me show you another key I give you for free. Pre-programmed. You do not have to do anything to make it work. Um, don't really have a good mob to show this one on. I'm going to go find something. Oh, I know what I can do. I can do a duel. OK, let's duel. Duel me frazzled the mage. Frazzled said, I accept your duel. I accept your duel, sir. And I am going to cast something at you. Have at thee. So Frazzled starts to cast something, right? Give me. And now I'm going to hit shift three. When Frazzled starts to cast anything that takes a cast time. There you go. Oh. And Shift 3, what I'm trying to show you, not very well, is that Shift 3 is an interrupt. That is your interrupt. So anytime you cast Shift 3, you will cast your class interrupt. And um, the class interrupt is actually a simple macro. Actually, no, it's it's not. It's a it's a it's a click macro. Blood int is is uh, what I've got a program for, but it. I think your base interrupt is a simple macro. Let's look at the interrupt for the the uh, mage. So it's this button right here. Int. Okay. It is a simple macro that casts your class interrupt. Now, I I did not do not have it set up right for Death Knights, so forgive me. Because Death Knights have multiple macros, I'm going to actually make um, some classes that have multiple interrupts. I'm going to make those classes interrupt on a GS macro because you have to like click through them. You have to have you have to try every one. You want every interrupt, but mages mainly have counter spell, right? So. Um, you'll see that um, if I hit Shift three on my mage, I'm gonna I'm gonna counterspell. There you go. I just counterspelled cheat. So interrupts on Shift three. You get that for free. What else? What are the buttons? Do you get for free? Oh, I'm in a duel. Uh, follow doesn't work in PvP, by the way. So. Um, when you're in PvP, you won't follow anybody. When you are in a battleground, you won't follow anybody. I think in world PvP, follow works though. Um, let me leave this duel. Anyway, um, 
me see. Do I even have my interrupt set up on my blood death knight? Blood int? Nope. I don't have my interrupt set up on my blood death knight, so he hasn't been interrupting all this time. What, do you think I'm good at this game? Okay, what else do I give you? All right. Um, I give you a couple of other macros. Um, I give you a fun one. Whoa, what, what's going on here? Boop, 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 boop. Oh, it's trying to tell me there's a rare nearby or something. I don't know. Whatever, man. Here's a fun macro I give you. F12. Everybody follow the leader. Okay. That can be good for setting up fights. Right? You don't want everybody to be clumped up. So you hit F12, have everybody follow, then back everybody up. Now you can you can pull that guy. You can you can pull that guy. Pull him. And now you guys are spread out. Uh, what else? Uh, F11. Spit on somebody. Do you want to spit on? You want all your people to spit on somebody? Hit F11. Target them and hit F11. Um, okay. And now you'll notice that there are some macros on the sidebar. These are standard macros I put on the sidebar. These macros here at the bottom are the tricky macros that allow you to follow and assist no matter what window the mouse is in, it will follow that window. These macros, leave them alone. Don't put anything here. Don't do anything to them. These, these are the macros that do your following and your assisting. Now, I give you a couple of other macros. Um, this one right here in the middle of the right bar is leave party. All right? I just left party. This one is dance. You can make all you guys dance. Um, this one is your hearthstone, the second one down. And this one is reload. Sometimes you'll want to reload your um, your interface, like after you change, um, like after you change your add-ons, uh, after you change Fury Swipes Five MMB, or after you drag and drop. You may, you might drag and drop while your tunes are in world, and you want to reload. Okay, that's it. That is all. Um, I've covered pretty much everything about um, how to start five minute multiboxing um multiboxing is very complicated it goes a lot deeper than what i've just explained um for example in retail wow um most classes have a uh an aspect about them that makes them go faster than uh 100 so like death knights, they go, they fly 20% faster than everybody else. That makes following complicated. Your death knight has to pause every few seconds to make sure that people don't drop follow. Okay. It's a pain in the ass. It's part of, it's one of the pain in the asses of multiboxing, but what are you going to do? Wow. I'm flying over AQ 40. Is this AQ 40? What is this? It is AQ40. Okay, I'm heading over to Oldham. But that's it. That's the end of the video, guys. That's the end of the stream. I'm going to post this video as an instructional video. I know it was long and cumbersome, um, but all of this you can do in five minutes uh, once you know about it. And uh, I just wanted to give a really long, drawn-out explanation, explanation about all the details so that I had it in one place. And, um, you know, there's a bit of complexity with retail because you, you have to do your own GS macros. But when you get into it and when you get to level 120, here's the payoff you get to do this elites out in the world they're nothing to you well fury swaps they're nothing to my 120 anyway i've got the best gear yes but they're nothing even faster 
because I've got five people. I don't have to sit there and fight something for, you know, five minutes on end because I got five people, man. This is the Accur Dominator. Now, the Accur Dominator, when I first started out two weeks ago, three weeks ago, he was kicking my ass. But I got some gear, I got my five people, and he doesn't even get his Void Storm off anymore. So, but that's not even the real main thing. It is fun to kill rares easily in the world, okay? Don't get me wrong. And it does allow you to do your assaults a lot faster and your dailies a lot faster. But um, you, can, you can do a lot more than that with it. And I will talk about that in later videos. Later, guys.